thank you very much. It's so lovely to see all of you out here, both those of you who have come in your EVs and those of you who are coming to look at your future EVs. Um, so welcome everyone. Um, so just a little bit of background about ECA. We're the um, agency that you see on TV as EnergyWise that gives you tips about energy efficiency in your home and keeping a warm, dry home. So just a little bit of an introduction. But we do do stuff around electric vehicles as well because we see when you look at the amount of energy that you use in your home, you actually spend at least as much on petrol as you do on energy for your home. So we want people to be saving money on the energy that they use and to help them be better for the environment as well and it's the environment which is why the government and a lot of people here are quite interested in EVs so we're really lucky in New Zealand that over 80% in fact right now it's 85% of our electricity generation is from renewable sources and that means when you're driving about on the roads in New Zealand you're getting at least an 80% reduction in the co2 emissions obviously if you're driving a pure EV you've got no, no tailpipe for anything to come out of but when you look at the electricity system that goes into that car, it's at least an 80% reduction in CO2 emissions, which, when it comes to your pocket, is equivalent of paying 30 cents a litre for petrol. So that's a real advantage in the running costs for New Zealand. And also in New Zealand, 90% of all trips that are done are under 90 kilometres, which are easily within range of the more affordable electric vehicles that we're starting to see coming in second hand. So New Zealand has a real advantage when it comes to elect electric vehicles um, compared with many countries in the world. There's probably only a couple of countries in the developed world, Norway and Iceland, that have more renewable electricity generation than New Zealand. And if we have a look at that, this is how electricity generation has been changing over time in New Zealand. You can see for about the last uh, seven or eight years, it's actually been flat. Despite the fact that we've got a, a growing population, despite the fact that we've all got more electric gadgets in our house and, and everyone's got a computer in their own rooms, we're actually using no more electricity at the moment. Um, it also means that there is plenty of room for more renewable electricity generation to fuel electric cars. If every car in New Zealand were to be electric, um, it would probably mean only a 20% increase in electricity demand in New Zealand, and there is sufficient consented projects for renewable generation to meet that demand in New Zealand if every car were to turn to be electric today. So we don't have to worry about that. And as you can see over time, the amount of generation that comes from fossil fuels is falling. New Zealand now generates more electricity from wind than it does from coal. And it generates more electricity from geothermal than it does from natural gas. So around 120 kilometers, it's the typical range of an entry-level um, Nissan Leaf coming second-hand from Japan. A car like that will cost you around maybe $15,000 to $18,000. And for most people, it will do their daily travel. A lot of households in New Zealand, probably more than half, have more than one car. So if you want to look to somewhere to start, try with your second car that you just do for the trips around town and you might be surprised it becomes your first car of choice. But a very sensible place to start. The average New Zealander drives just 20 kilometers a day. And for your electric vehicle, you can plug in either at home or when you're out and about. The best place to charge an electric vehicle is at home overnight. When you do that, you're buying, you will be able to buy electricity at an overnight rate. Um, it's, it will be cheapest for you, it will actually be best for the New Zealand grid, and it's actually better for your battery in your car as well, to have a nice slow charge overnight. And there's a great project running out of Dunedin called Flip the Fleet that monitors EV owners um, in New Zealand to find out uh, how New Zealanders are using EVs. And 92% of people who own EVs in New Zealand, their favorite place to charge is at home overnight because it's convenient, it's easy, it's cheap, and it's good for the car, and it's good for the country and the emissions. Sometimes, of course, you want to charge when you're out and about, when you're going away for the weekend, you're going to visit friends or family. And now there's an ever-increasing number of electric vehicle stations where you can get a charge to top up as you're out and about. And there's a little map there that shows the fast stations that are popping up around New Zealand at the moment. 
Um, through ECO, we've already been funding projects this year that will see them more in the South Island, more on the East Cape, and more further up north as well. So that's, um, that's, that, that's been expanding really, really fast. Um, just out of interest, a couple of those little uh, fast charger toggles you can see is greyed out. Those were ones which were in use at the time that I took that photograph. So you can even have a look ahead and see, see whether they're going to be busy or not. So when we put that all together, what it means is for an overnight charge at home to do 100 kilometres, it will cost you about $3. Whereas a fast charge, when you're out and about, does cost a little bit more, about $10. I'm going to nick another lovely little phrase from my friend Russell down here in the front row, who this morning said to me, when you charge at home overnight, it's like having your cup of coffee in the morning. It's relatively cheap when you go out for a coffee, when you're out and about, you pay a little bit more, but it's about the convenience when you're out and about and enjoying your day. So when we look at the prices of electric vehicles, and we have at our stand, which is the big, um, right in the center of the display through here, we have a stand that's from the government. It's got the electric vehicles uh, logo that you see in the bottom, and it has a blue used Nissan Leaf in the middle. We've got sheets of all the price guides for new and used electric vehicles in New Zealand. So go out and pick up one of those if you want. But here I've given a few examples. So the prices are starting to come down for new electric vehicles. They are still have a premium on them compared to other vehicles, but I'll tell you in a minute about how you can compare those using the total to cost of ownership tool that we have. For a lot of us in here, we'll be looking at used vehicles, and they are coming in now secondhand from Japan um, and the UK. Um, they are the actual most popular way that electric vehicles are coming into the country at the moment. Around half of all vehicles coming into the country are used Nissan Leafs, um, and then after that, new um, Outlanders and Teslas and other cars like that are popular. But by far and away, the, the Nissan Leaf is the most popular car that's coming in at the moment. And if you can see, prices start from around ten to twelve thousand um, dollars. A typical one with a second-generation Nissan Leaf might cost you around eighteen thousand to twenty thousand dollars. And then you get ones that are almost brand new as well, coming in from the UK. So the average cost that you need to run um, a, a, an ordinary petrol vehicle at the moment, um, say a typical Toyota Corolla, New Zealand's favourite car, um, if you get a relatively new one, that's about 6.7 litres per 100 kilometres um, to do that, which will cost you around $1,800, $1,900 a year if you are the average motorist. If we look at what it costs for a Nissan Leaf, on electricity, charging at home overnight to do the same distance, it will cost you $360 to do that. That's about $1,500 a year in savings. If you do a simple payback, if you go and buy uh, something like a second-hand Nissan Leaf at about $18,000, which is comparable to a Toyota Corolla at 2014 prices, something like that, over if you own that car for five years, you will have saved $7,500 on what you would have done in petrol. That has significantly brought down the price of your investment in that car over an equivalent, something like a Toyota Corolla. And there are also special electricity rates for EV owners that can get that price down even further. There's a, a lot of uh, companies that offer overnight rates. I've picked out three companies here that offer special rates just for EV owners. Uh, Mercury Energy, Meridian, and Power. They um, vary around the country according to where you live because the price of electricity uh, varies. And also the local lines company, and that's a component of your electricity bill, will have an effect on that as well. But you can see the, ch the typical ch charge a Nissan Leaf from empty to full ranges from about three to five dollars depending on where you go. And there's a publication called EV Talk. It's a great magazine. And they regularly update prices and who's offering special deals for EV owners. And maintenance costs. For a pure electric vehicle, maintenance costs are significantly reduced. If we have a look at some of the components, obviously you still need to keep your tires uh, pressure well maintained. We recommend that you do that monthly and it's particularly important for electric vehicles because if you have slightly flat tires your range will go down. So you need to keep those tires pumped up. 
You also need to make sure that you check your tyres regularly for wear and get them wheel aligned. If you own an electric vehicle, be sure to, to replace the tyres with the manufacturer's recommended fuel efficient tyres. If you put an, another tyre on it, again, your range might reduce slightly because they're designed to have that range with a fuel efficient tyre. Obviously, you have to keep the, the lights, indicators and wipers, what, um, what uh, NZTA recommend as the twirl checks. Have a look at their site if you want to know about more, than that, more about that to, to keep your, your vehicle um, legal and, and safe on the roads. Um, and also, there is gearbox oil. So, in, of course, in a petrol vehicle, you have to change that. You do actually have some oil, a little tiny bit, in the reduction gear in an electric motor, and you will have to maintain that, but I don't think it's as much or as frequently as in a petrol vehicle. Brakes, yes, of course you have to look after your brakes, but you will probably have to look after them less frequently with a car which has regenerative braking, because it's not applying those braking pads so often. It's capturing that energy in the momentum that you've got mo um, when you're rolling, that if you, if you back off or you start to brake, it will recapture that energy and put it back into the battery. So you will save on brake wear as well. Excuse me, why don't you mention battery? I will come to that shortly. I'll come to that shortly. So I'll, I'll do it right now. Um, both cars actually do have a 12 volt battery um, to run the accessories. The electric vehicle obviously has a battery in it as well and that's a major part of the cost. The battery should last the life of the vehicle. Um, if you, uh, and I don't know if any of you heard Brent's talk o uh, earlier, he described about how batteries um, are actually made up of, of lots and lots of different cells. Their range does deteriorate a little over time. Um, if you buy a car that starts off with a 200 kilometer range, when it comes to its official end of life, as the manufacturers describe it, that means it has 80% of its original capacity left, which is still 160 kilometers of range if you started off at 200 kilometers. So the battery will be still working, it's just that your range has reduced. And 160 kilometers of range might still be quite satisfactory for what you need to do in your car. And the other thing about um, electric vehicle batteries is that they can be refurbished. And we've already got companies starting to do that in New Zealand. So it's not like a lead acid battery when it comes to its life. You think that's it, it's done. You can refurbish those batteries and keep them going, even replacing dead cells within them and refurbishing the whole pack. So that's why, that's the information that I'd like to tell you about electric vehicle batteries, because it's not necessarily something that you will need to pay for through the life of the car, but you certainly could refurbish them if you wanted to. When it comes to fluid levels, um, obviously you don't have a clutch, you don't have uh, power, uh, well, you don't have um, brake fluid and so on, but, yeah, sorry, you do have brake fluid, but there is no clutch fluid um, in, uh, uh, in, in an electric car. Um, oil for filters and so on are not there without the engine, you'll still need to change the cabin air filter, and then there are some things that you just will never have to worry about again. The engine oil, the spark plugs, cam belt, your exhaust system, the catalytic converter that you need to clean up the air from your exhaust and so on. We have a tool on our website called our Total Cost of Ownership tool. If you, I've given you a rough idea how you can do a simple payback, um, on the costs of running the vehicle, which might save you $1,500 a year in fueling costs. If you want to look at something in a bit more detail, we have a tool on our website, which is called the Total Cost of Ownership Tool. It's designed for fleets to compare the cost of new cars. Um, and it contains every single new car that's on the market in New Zealand at the moment, whether it's petrol, diesel, or electric. And you can go on there and you can do a lot of calculations. You can change the numbers, a lot of the numbers for yourself. We start off with, with recommended retail prices for new cars. And if you think you can get a better deal, or if you know your fleet can get a better deal, or you want to buy one second hand, and therefore the price would be lower, you can adjust those. And you can adjust them also for prices that you think that they may be worth at the end. So if you want to go into some detail and look at all kinds of what various finance options, there is a tool there that can help you do that. And we do have used Nissan Leafs as a possibility in that tool at the moment. For example, here I've chosen a couple of, of um, three vehicles, all that work out about the same 
total cost of ownership over a typical brand new vehicle um, mileage of 20,000 kilometers a year, all at 32 cents per kilometer to own, and that includes depreciation on those costs. So you can see how it compares with some other cars, but you can make your own choices. Oh, gone the wrong way. So New Zealand has set a target to have uptake of 64,000 electric vehicles by 2021. Basically, that means we double the number of vehicles every year to 2021. And we expect over time the prices of vehicles will continue to fall and people will know more about electric vehicles and the uh, decreased variety of any electric vehicles that are coming into New Zealand will help build to that target. 64,000 vehicles doesn't sound like a huge amount, but come 2021, one in ten new entrants to the New Zealand fleet will have to be electric to meet that target. So how are we going against that? We are ahead of that target. So we are more than doubling the number of electric vehicles on the roads every year in New Zealand. Um, the 4,000 target that was set for 2017 was reached five months early in July. It's now just the start of September and we're already at 4,500 electric vehicles sold. So it's, it's the, the growth is, is going really, really well. Um, and we hope to see that continuing as more varieties of vehicles come to New, into New Zealand to meet people's needs and the prices are getting sharper. And for some people, time is really important, a factor of their ownership. So this week, uh, the New Zealand Transport Agency uh, announced that in Auckland there will be 11 special lanes that will be available for electric vehicle um, owners to use to help their journeys become more convenient. They'll be able to use 11 transit lanes that will be phased in over the course of this month to help make their journeys a little bit faster and more convenient. So uh, EV owners will have got some information who uh, in the post um, about that if they live in the Auckland area and signage will be going up. Just make sure that those lanes will be rolled out slowly over the course of September don't use them until you can see very clear signage that says that you're able to use them. But for a lot of, of, of Auckland owners, that might be something that, that's um, valuable to them and part of their investment in, in EV ownership. So what can you do now? I've given you lots of facts and figures and it's great that you're all here today. If you haven't driven an EV yet, I really suggest that you take a job opportunity while you're here to go to the tents outside and to book for a ride or take a ride or drive one today. Or if you want to do one at your convenience, there's a number of companies where you can just rent or hire an EV from uh, companies like City Hop here in Auckland that do car share and have some EVs available. Mevo in Wellington also do car shares. For those cars, you can hire them by the hour, so you can just take them for a little trip or see how it might work in your home. Or um, companies like Hertz here in Auckland, Europe Car, Blue Car, Snap Rentals, all have EVs available that you can try out. And so you can also come to our website, electricvehicles.govt.nz, which has lots of information. We have videos that make it all easy for you to find out more and links to lots of other places that you can go to for more information. So thank you very much and I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. So thank you, Liz. Uh, lots of really good information there. I'll come round with a mic for your question so that everybody can hear the question, if you don't mind. Hiya. You mentioned that at end of life of the car, the battery should have 80% of its capability. What is the end of life of the car? I don't think anybody knows yet because they haven't been round long enough. So that's just what the manufacturers say. If we, have, if we look at companies like the Ionic that are selling battery um, electric cars in New Zealand, they give a 10 year warranty on the battery. I was just reading the other day that there is a taxi driver in um, Canada that does, has done 400,000 kilometers in their EV and their battery has only depreciated to 92% of what it originally was. It depends partly on how you look after your car and the battery there. Um, we're very lucky in New Zealand that we live in a temperate climate, which is ideal for prolonging battery life. If you live in a very hot, deserty area or in a very cold country like Norway, um, then you might have some, your, your battery might deteriorate a bit quicker, but actually New Zealand is perfect for maintaining the life of an EV battery. 
Right, because New Zealand also has a reputation for uh, a very old car fleet. Mm -hmm. Because cars last longer here. Yeah. And my current car is 12 years old and it's still got plenty of years in it. Yeah. So end of life needs to be 20 years plus. Additionally, on the reuse, reduce, re, uh, reduce, reuse, recycle principle, we need to reduce the number of cars we're buying. So yes. the car should be now being designed to last 20, 30 years. Yes, and there's, on, there's and the batteries to go with that because if replacing the batteries costs half as much as the car, suddenly the cost of ownership goes through the roof. Well, given that you can refurbish those batteries on part of the reduced yeah, refurbish, um, I yeah, think. You do it on a phone. You might as well buy a new phone. Yes, um, it will be substantially cheaper to refurbish batteries than to buy them new. Okay. Any more questions? Yeah, we've got a question at the back. I um, a couple of questions. Does the cost things take into account road user charges? And uh, are charging stations a common um, fitting for all electric vehicles? Thank you for that question. So at the moment, electric vehicles are exempt from road user charges. Basically, there are two ways that the government collects revenue to look after the roads and invest in infrastructure and keep the roads maintained. One is petrol excise, which is paid when you buy petrol at the pump. And the other is road user charges that apply to everything else that doesn't use petrol. We usually know that as diesel vehicles at the moment, but it actually applies to everything that doesn't use petrol. So at the moment, road user charges are exempted from electric vehicles uh, until 21, 2021 for light vehicles. And for heavy vehicles, they're also now exempt. Um, and that will apply until heavy vehicles become 2% of the fleet. So yes, at some point, the government will need all, ele all electric vehicles and all vehicles to be paying fairly for the roads and the impact that they have on other things like the environment. So we don't know yet what the rates would be um, come the rate, what will happen at the end of the RUC exemption. The government will actually have to take an active step to put them back on to electric vehicles. Um, and they still have to yet work out what to do about plug-in hybrids, which pay both um, excise on the pump and road user charges. So if you like, they're being double taxed, um, which obviously is not fair. So something will have to be done to sort that out. Until that is clear, that road use, use, user charges is guaranteed to be in place until 2021, and there are yet to be announcements about what would have come after that. Thank you, Liz. And one more question at the back here. Um, are car mechanics being upskilled? Yes, they are. So we've been working with MITO when they were here speaking yesterday along with other people from the motor industry trade. And right at the moment, there are new courses that are going in for um, automotive technicians, starting at a very basic level to introduce them to the concepts of, of, of electric vehicles. So the people that can do your WAF and change your tires know what to expect when they have an electric vehicle brought into them. And right at the moment, we're having more development in training and setting up of standards for automotive technicians to be trained. So yes, that is happening. One final question at the front here. Uh, does anybody do something the equivalent of uh, like a Toyota Hilux? Um, there's a stand four here, four-wheel four drive, four four wheel drive you type of type of thing. Um, today here, if you come out and look outside, there's actually a mining vehicle that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, quite an extensive uh, vehicle that's just been developed here in Palmerston North. That's going to be, um, I understand, going to the Australian mining industry. Um, commercially available, no, there isn't an equivalent to that yet. Um, there have been a few companies hinting that they are developing things, but know for the moment that there isn't. I hope that there will be in the future. Thank you very much. Um, that's all we have time for um, at the moment, but Liz will be around today, won't you, Liz, to answer yes. qu all your questions. Uh, back at 12, well, we have two EV owners who will be able to tell you what it's actually like to own an EV. So that's uh, going to be really interesting. In the meantime, thank you to Liz. Thank you.